G'day Cherie, thanks for the comment. So what sort of businesses do I invest in? Uh, I guess I call myself a professional investor these days. I've done enough of it uh, to be able to, to say so. I'll explain to you a little bit about my investment methodology, uh, how I invest in businesses and uh, what the, uh, the returns have been so far. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I started as a financial advisor, call myself a wealth coach. I spent 16 plus years in financial services and advice. Now, over that time, we've developed a methodology and uh, we realized that uh, we run advice businesses and financial services businesses better than the vast majority of people. Um, so we realized that we had a strategy that we can go and acquire other financial services businesses, primarily uh, financial advice businesses and mortgage broking businesses, roll those businesses into our business, uh, use our systems and our frameworks and our value proposition in order to uh, grow and scale that business. And it's a really simple way to grow. We learned some lessons along the way because uh, it's not that easy. And I'll explain to you the whole philosophy. So the foundation of our business acquisition strategy comes down to a, uh, an acquisition model called the Ansoff Matrix. And the Ansoff Matrix explains that as a business owner, assuming you've already got an existing business, any other business that you look at must sit in one of four quadrants. The first quadrant is what's called market penetration. And this is whereby you have an existing product in an existing market. So let's say, for example, you've got a financial advice business in, uh, in Sydney, let's say a suburb of Sydney, and then you go and acquire another financial advice business in that same similar area. That's a market penetration strategy because you're capturing market share. The second quadrant is a new product to an existing market. And this is referred to as a share of wallet strategy. So the idea here is that you have uh, an existing uh, market of individuals. Um, so you've got existing clients that are a part of your business and you could develop a new product uh, that adds value to those individuals. And therefore, if they're something that they're already paying for or something that they would pay for because it delivers a particular result for them, then why wouldn't they buy it from you? Because they've already got an existing relationship with you. Because as we know, developing that relationship in the first instance is often the hardest part. This is our strategy. Uh, and I'll explain to you a little bit more about this shortly. Thirdly, we've got an existing product in a new market. This is market expansion. So this is like, okay, you've got a financial planning business in Sydney, you go set one up in Brisbane or another area for that matter. And you do this because you believe that you've reached a certain level of saturation in your market. And therefore the simplest solution is for you to uh, expand the markets that you trade in, right? Particularly if you've got a geographically limited offering. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that as well shortly. And then the last one is diversification. And this is a new product in a new market. And this is like, okay, well, you're a financial advisor. Um, you want to spread your eggs. So you go and buy a laundromat. Oh, just a, that's a random example. Uh, you go buy any other kind of business um, that basically has nothing to do with you, what you already do. Now, this is critically important, and I've done it in this order because this is basically the order in which you should do business acquisitions. So initially, we needed to get market penetration. We did acquisitions in markets with products that we already knew. Second, we then worked on share of wallet because we built a client base. We've now got over 1,100 clients in our business um, who are typically all business owners or uh, affluent uh, professionals who are looking to build wealth. And we have acquired mortgage broking businesses, accounting businesses, uh, business outsourcing businesses. Uh, we've got strategic partnerships with property advisory businesses. So basically, we've got all of the things that our clients need in order to grow and scale their business and their wealth. And um, essentially, uh, we, our business is structured in a way where because we run the business online, our marketing allows us to do the market expansion. We don't need to physically expand our territories. Um, we just basically adjust our targeting. And uh, that allows us to uh, tackle the third quadrant easily. Now, I often see business owners getting stuck in chasing the diversification because they're shiny objects. I've been guilty of, of looking at it. Thank God, haven't pursued it. Um, and uh, they say, oh, the grass is always greener on the other side. There's this other industry or other business um, that I can get involved in. And it's got all this extra upside. And the issue with that is, is that the thing that's often overlooked is the bandwidth of managing, running multiple businesses, particularly when they don't have any central uh, operating system, right? All of my businesses serve similar clients or the same clients, uh, have very similar processes. Um, they all kind of sing off the same songbook, so to speak. I've got centralized management, I've got centralized systems, centralized technology. It all kind of works seamlessly. And when you've got completely unaligned businesses, you now have split focus across those businesses where somebody who can dedicate their, all of their time and attention on a single business 
you might be only able to invest a fraction of your time. So you lose competitive advantage very quickly. And this is why I don't play in that space. And um, my view is you only diversify once uh, in your business, that, that is, once you've capitalized on all of the opportunities that exist in the other three quadrants. So that's my strategy. Um, we've done about eight figures in acquisitions um, and uh, our business is worth uh, uh, in excess of $10 million in asset value. And uh, typically speaking, when we buy, uh, buy businesses, uh, we do so using banks' money. We typically only come up with about 30% of that purchase. We borrow the rest from the bank. Interest rates vary, as we know, interest rates are going up uh, from kind of seven to 14%, which stings. But uh, we kind of do what we need to do to get the deal over the line. However, if you buy a business at let's say three times profit, right? Let's say the business does 100 grand a year of profit. You pay 300 grand for it. Uh, and you borrowed money at even 10%. That might cost you 100 grand, uh, will cost you uh, in terms of principal interest repayments over seven years or whatever, it might cost you 30 or 40 grand a year. Uh, you've still got 50, 60 grand, 70 grand a year in free cash flow from doing that acquisition. And then of course, any of the upside that you get. So in terms of a yield, you go and buy a residential property, let's say, and it might produce you a yield of 5%, and that's a good yield. A business can produce you a yield of 33% or more. And uh, of course, then you've also got the asset value, which we are increasing uh, over time. Business acquisitions is complicated. Uh, I've uh, got a, a chartered uh, business valuations uh, uh, accreditation. I've done a lot of work in this space. It's something you need to invest a lot of time and effort into understanding. And uh, it's definitely risky. Uh, there is risks associated with it, but I love it. Uh, it's been a great way to uh, accelerate my wealth and we've helped many of our clients uh, implement an acquisition strategy into their business that's allowed them to grow and scale as well. So if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Hope this has been valuable.